Welcome to another Tech Help video brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. I'm your instructor, Richard Rost. Got one for the developer students today, and today I'm going to label it extra nerdy. This is for the advanced, advanced nerdy developers. I'm going to show you how to look up records faster than DLOOKUP. DLOOKUP is great. I love DLOOKUP. I use it all the time, but it's not the fastest function. And if you're using it in a loop or you use it constantly, like when records load and you're on current event, it can be slow. So today I'm going to show you how to use a technique faster than DLOOKUP to look up values. In yesterday's video, I showed you about the timer function and how you can use it to figure out what parts of your code are causing slowdowns. Like me, if you've got a long on current event in a particular form or lots of code in a button, for example, you can put timer statements in there so you can see which lines of code are taking the longest, right? This one's four seconds, this one's two seconds, and so on. Then we can optimize those. And today we're gonna start optimizing stuff. Also in one of my previous videos, this guy, I talked about a very important tip. If all you care about is whether a record exists or not, don't use decount. People make this mistake all the time. I make this mistake. Well, I used to make this mistake all the time before I knew about this. Checking a decount is much, much slower than using DLOOKUP. The problem is decount is going to actually run down all of the records, and this will be very slow, especially with large tables. So if you just want to know whether something exists or not, use DLOOKUP instead. Right, I do. I used to do it all the time. I'm like, do I have any uh, emails from this customer? So I would decount it and look for a zero, right? But it's got to go out and count all of the emails first, just to tell me whether or not they have any emails in the system. So if you just want to know if something exists, use DLOOKUP instead. Uh, try to pull a single field, any field. I like to pull the IDs, right? And check if the result is null or not with an NZ. And if it returns anything, then a record exists. That's it. You're done. Way faster. In some cases, it can be twice as fast or more. So watch that other video if you want to learn about that. Now, if you've been watching my videos for any length of time, you know I love DLOOKUP. I use it everywhere. Along with DCOUNT, DMAX, DMIN, all the D functions. There's nothing wrong with them. They're great tools. And I will continue to use them and teach them. But like any tool, they have their place. The problem is they're not optimized for speed. And we'll get into the really nerdy reason why later. Now, the D functions, they're convenient, they're easy to use, and they work fine in most situations, but they're not exactly fast, especially when you call them over and over again in something like an on current event, which runs every time a record loads. I've got several lookups in my on current event for my customer form. I look up to see what their membership level is. I look up to see if they have any emails in the system, if they have any unpaid orders. So there's three or four, maybe like six lookups that happen every time I load a customer. Now, if this is a lookup you do occasionally, you know, a form that opens once in a while or something like a, you know, a DSUM on your main menu to show you the day's sales, something, you know, that's not a big deal. Keep using the D functions. They're easy, they're convenient. But if it's a form you use constantly, or you're running code over and over again in loops, they, they could be slowing things down using DLOOKUP. So it's time to pull out more advanced tools from our toolbox, All right? You got forms you use constantly throughout the day, codes that runs every record change, like an on current event, performance sensitive ideas, loops that you've got, that kind of stuff. Well, what's the solution? I'm gonna talk about the solution briefly, then we're gonna take a look at the code and then we're going to go into some nerdiness afterwards, okay? So we're going to do a little bit of theory and then the code and then a lot of theory after, okay? All right, so the way that you do this is you're going to use a direct SQL query. It's going to be the SQL in your code, not a saved query. We're going to open a record set in DB open snapshot mode, which is the fastest. All right, we're going to get just one record using the top one parameter in our SQL statement. Then we'll quickly check to see if any record exists, right? It's going to be one or zero at this point. So if we're at RSEOF, that means there's no record. Fast and efficient, it'll exit out or we'll get the value, right? We're only pulling one record out of the table. 
Now, I've had this cut my execution time in half. I had a, a form that was opening. It took eight seconds to open, and then it, it dropped it down to four, which doesn't seem like much, but four seconds every time you open up a form, and if you open that form up 100 times a day, you do the math. That's like a lot of seconds or something. Now, we're going to get to the code in a minute, but don't panic. You don't have to rebuild your entire database and purge the lookups from the entire thing. But when you're optimizing performance critical parts of your application, this is a technique worth knowing. All right, it's another tool for your box of tools, otherwise known as your toolbox. Right? Okay. So this is for advanced developers. Use it when you need it. You don't have to put it everywhere. Although I've started now, now that I've put, put this in my database, every time I go to use a DLOOKUP, I just use my DLOOKUP function instead. So it's a lot faster. Every millisecond counts when you scale. So if you start adding users, start you know adding lots of records, every, it, it, yeah, things start to slow down. Well, let's talk about some prerequisites. Obviously, this is advanced VBA in this one. So if, if you're not there yet, this is a good place to start. Watch my intro to VBA, it's about 20 minutes long. It'll teach you what you need to know to get started with VBA. And then there's a bunch of other videos you can watch to kind of get up to speed. You should know what variables are, how to declare them, how to use them, how to take them to dinner. Of course, you should be well familiar with dlookup, dcount, dmax, dmin, dsum, all of the d functions. And of course, nz is like dlookup's little cousin, right? You're always going to use nz to wrap it, checking for nulls. You should know how to use if, then, else blocks, of course. We're going to use my status box function to display status on the main menu. It's easier than using message box. I don't like the immediate window, so I built this little guy. Go watch this video. Here's the big one. You should definitely know record sets. The key to doing this properly is to use a record set. If you don't know what a record set is, go watch this first, definitely. And you should know some basic SQL. You don't need to know all the advanced stuff. Just some basic select statements will get you by. Now, all of these are free videos. They're on my YouTube channel. They're on my website. Go watch all of them if you're not sure about any of this stuff and then come on back. Okay, here I am in my Tech Help free template. This is a free database. You can grab a copy off my website if you want to. Now, what I have done with this database is I linked it to my message archive T. All right, it's in a different database. It's sitting on my server. And what I do with my emails, all my emails come into my access database that I use every day for you know chatting with you guys, customer service, that kind of stuff. And I've got all of the emails ever sent to my customer service form on my website and, and by regular email going back to 2003. Okay, so when they're a year old, they get sent to the message archive table. This table has over 200,000 records in it. It's about 600 megs in size. So yeah, I'm gonna probably need to be doing some pruning soon, but this is the perfect table to be testing this stuff with. So I want to check and see if there are any email address or any emails to my email address in here. Okay, so I'm gonna go to the customer form. I'm gonna slide this over here. And I'm just gonna make a button that's gonna check and see if this person has any emails in the message archive table. All right, we're gonna do it the old fashioned way first using DLOOKUP. If you use DCOUNT, then that's gonna be really slow. I'm not even gonna bother. The other video, I, I proved that definitively. All right, so we're just gonna check to see if this guy has emails. All right, so we're gonna copy one of these buttons, copy paste, right? Uh, check email, right click, build event. All right, first thing you'll notice, yes, I forgot to name my button. Don't worry about it, this is just temporary. I always name my buttons, Alex will yell at me if I don't, but only if it's a button I plan on keeping around. If it's just temporary, like this is just temporary, I don't care. All right, so we're gonna look up a message ID from that message archive table. We're gonna see if it exists for the current user, right? If, I just wanna know if any emails exist. So, dim message ID as a long, that is the primary key in the message archive table. Okay, and now I'm gonna say message ID equals NZD lookup. I'm looking up a message ID from the message archive table where, now the email address in that table is sender email equals, and I'm looking for the email address of the current customer. So it's a string, so it's gonna be dit, 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 right? And email is the field on the form. And dit, 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 right? And if you don't know what double, double quotes are, go watch this video. 
Essentially, that's a string value, so you got to put it inside of quotes. Two double quotes becomes a single double quote. Okay. And, oh, we forgot our NZ, so comma zero. All right. So this says, look up this email address in this table, right, and return the message ID. And just, just find one. That's what DLOOKUP says. Just, I just care about the first one. Well, you can't necessarily guarantee it's the first one, but you're going to get a record. It's usually the first one. Okay? And if it doesn't find one, it'll return a null, which NZ converts to a zero. Now, if message ID equals zero, then status, no emails found. Else status, uh, emails were found. And if. Okay? All right. Save it. Debug compile once in a while. Let's come up. Yeah. Close it. And let's check for email. All right. Emails were found. It ran relatively quickly. Okay, let's try somebody else I don't think's in there. I don't think there's a Jim Kirk in there. Let's click. No emails found. That's probably about right. Okay, now let's see how long this takes. Let's use the trick from last time, right? So we're going to dim, we'll just call it a T as a double. All right, up here I'm going to say T equals timer. And then down here on the end, I'm going to say status time elapsed. And that's going to be equals timer minus T and seconds. All right, let's see how many seconds that took. Ready, go. Okay, it took 0.25 seconds. Now again, this is just a single lookup. And what we're, what we're, what we're going for here is if you've got like lots of lookups in a form, you know, you got a really complicated code. This is just a simple example, but you get where I'm coming from, right? Okay. So now we know how to do this lookup and how to do it the old fashioned way. Next, we're gonna see how to do it the new fast optimized way. And we'll see how to do that in tomorrow's video. So tune in tomorrow, same bat time, same bat channel. Members, you can watch it right now because I'm gonna keep recording. But that's gonna do it for your tech help video for today. Hope you learned something. Live long and prosper, my friends. I'll see you tomorrow for part two. If you enjoyed this video, hit that thumbs up button right now and give me a like. Also, be sure to subscribe to my channel, which is completely free. And make sure you click that bell icon and select all to receive notifications whenever I post a new video. Do you need help with your Microsoft Access project? Whether you need a tutor, a consultant, or a developer to build something for you, check out my Access Developer Network. It's a directory I put together personally of access experts who can help with your project. Visit my website to learn more. Any links or other resources that I mentioned in the video can be found in the description text below the video. Just click on that show more link right there. YouTube's pretty good about hiding that, but it's there. Just look for it. Now, if you have not yet tried my free Access Level 1 course, check it out now. It covers all the basics of Microsoft Access including building forms, queries, reports, tables, all that stuff. It's over four hours long. You can find it on my website or my YouTube channel. I'll include a link below you can click on. And did I mention it's completely free? And if you like level one, level two is just $1. That's it. And it's free for members of my YouTube channel at any level. Speaking of memberships, if you're interested in joining my channel, you get all kinds of awesome perks. Silver members get access to all of my extended cut tech help videos, and there's hundreds of them by now. They also get one free beginner class each month, and yes, those are from my full courses. Gold members get the previous perks, plus access to download all of the sample databases that I build in my tech help videos. Plus, you get access to my code vault, where I keep tons of different functions and all kinds of source code that I use. And gold members get one free expert class every month after completing the beginner series. Platinum members get all of the previous perks, plus they get all of my beginner courses, all of them from every subject, and you get one free advanced or developer class every month after finishing the expert series. And you can become a diamond sponsor and have your name listed on the sponsor page on my website. So that's it. Once again, my name is Richard Rost. Thank you for watching this video brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. I hope you enjoyed. I hope you learned something today. Live long and prosper, my friends. I'll see you next time.